Hello, I'm setting up this quick review on how to import Speed 3 materials into Modo. First thing I would like to recommend you is to set all your viewport preview settings really low because we would like to have immediate feedback on what we're seeing on screen from the model import from the Speed 3 export. Here in Speed 3 I like to show you a neat feature which you can create variations with your from your original model and in this case I'm naming the model and you have the parameters to export to another 3D app with presets material presets in this case but Modo doesn't have that so you need to set your material on specular amount and fresnel amount very really low and also the blending mode from the material and the textures should be switch from add into normal. So once you activate your texture you should see reflected on your viewport your alphas, your diffuse channels or textures in this case. Always check with your um, blending mode from, from the specular and fresnel. And Lastly, on the tutorial, I would like to show you that you can enhance the textures by placing a variation texture from Modo so you can um, play with the colors on the leaves. The first gradient will show you the intensity and the second gradient will drive the color correctly. Right, so let's get started. Hello, this is just my quick review on how to import and um, properly shade a, a Speed 3 model into Modo. Alright, so he here we have a quick preview. And this tree looks very, um, not much al alive. That's just the way I wanted it because it's on a desert and I thought maybe it's a dry bush or something. So I quickly cre created this to show you what steps I take and I really want to thank the people on the Moto uh, users list on Facebook which is really helpful and they gave me a lot of uh, inside help for this and basically it's got to do with the shaders. Um, when Speed 3 um, deploys a model, it also sends the shading of that model in, in, in a specific way, which Modo interprets as, as a add mode, blending mode, add blending mode, and that's why we don't get the results we want right away. But in this case, I'm just showing you here there's an environment map um, downgrading the previewer because it's really really slow and here we go so let's import one of the trees from speed tree with this default settings and it's imported I rename it let's scale this And if you can take notice, a lot of the branches are clips that come with their own alphas. But how do we generate this? I'm going to quickly go over Speed 3 and show you the original model of this um, yellow tree. And one of the things that I've, I've been looking around Speed 3, it's, it's the way to optimize the polygon count and you can see right there there is a, a method to simplify what the branches and the leaves look like you have to be at base level of the node because you can get many branches and many polygons also many leaves 
which will make your model very heavy. So in this case, if you go to the to the root level and push simplify, it will downgrade all that modeling and bake it into a polygon so you can um, have your model very lightweight so you can also import it into Moto without a problem. So here I'm just arranging the nodes as you can see and that's how you get um, variations for the textures the polygon counts, the, the, the three shapes, okay? So you can also randomize the branches, the leaves, the amount of leaves. So if you can take notice, there are 77k polys. and this one's just around 22k so just export the three and it will run OK here you have your uh, measurements also the presets I cho chose Softimage but you can choose Maya or 3ds Max they also have scripts so you can re-import them back in your application and the shader will show just right. But I wanted to also export variations of these three in one shot, in one export. So it would ask me how many variations I will want. So I will select three and then give it a name. And once you got that, you set up your, your um, coordinate system and export your variations. Alright, back to Moto. Those are my three variations. I'm just gonna choose one and then I'll set up the shader in the way that Moto will read it properly. So I exported my model. Let's scale it. There we are. Now let's preview this on the viewer, on the viewport render. And I'm switching everything off so that it won't delay calculating global illumination or shadows or any other of the effects. I just need to know if my, shader, my shaders are being read the way they are supposed to be represented on the, on the render preview. So I'm switching everything off and here you can see that the specular amounts is the first thing that we have to take notice and also the blending mode for every texture that we imported from from Speed3. Okay. Once we got that you can see correctly your textures on the screen. Well, I'm going to go with branches and the same thing, we go to the specular amount and downgrade it. Right here I'm going to switch to stencil mode because I, wanna, I want to cut whatever it's under. So I need to invert that and we see that the branches are coming out from that sim simplify method that we chose on speed 3. I'm choosing gamma 0. 45 because that's 2.2 divided by 1 which will represent an, an sRGB image correctly alright last but not least I will really encourage you that you refresh your viewport by maximizing and minimizing it so that it could also be refreshed because sometimes you make changes to your shader but you will not see a reflect on your preview window. 
Right now I'm going to add an environment map, which is an, an EXR image, 32 floating, uh, 32 bits floating point. And I'm going to adjust the locator, which in this case will be a spherical map with Y axis up. And this will light my scene. If I don't like what it's showing on the background, I can just switch off on the shader, on the properties of the shader, material rather, that I don't want it to be visible on camera. And also I'm switching off global illumination so that it won't contribute that much for the calculus and to speed up render times. All right, so we finally come to the leaves, the most important part, I would guess, on the tree. So here also we color correct, um, rather gamma correct, the images, and also setting everything up for the blending mode on normal instead of add. I like to work with an 80 millimeter camera lens. I'm switching the mode to stencil because I want to cut cut out everything downwards. You can clearly see there that we already have our our color from the leaf. So I'm switching some maps around. Here you can go with your own preference, but I tend to use um, the alpha from the leaf as a stencil and the specular amount in just half of its original value. And you can see how it switches when um, you specifically touch the diffuse color texture the normal map is set to add which I'm going to correct in a minute but I just want to show you another quick way to variate your leaves speed 3 does a pretty good job uh, sending you the, 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 the texture maps but sometimes you would also want to switch around some of the colors so that it won't look all the same. You, you would want variations. This is where the variation texture comes, comes handy. You select mesh parts and then you need to grade what colors you want on the gradient and how intense that color will be. That's why you see that I got black and white because I want certain regions from the gradient to show more than others. Regions I want are white, regions I don't want are black. Now the leaf seems to come alive with color variations. See here I'm switching off everything again and testing one by one because the leaves really draw attention for the tree. So now the normal map was already corrected as the normal mode instead of add. Viewport response pretty good with just 22k polys on this tree. So I would like to show you what happens if I switch to another blending mode which I probably select um, overlay. I'm trying to cover some more range of the colors. 
so that it will look more natural. Right now the leaves are washed out, so I want to correct that. And the way I corrected it was because I forgot about the normal map, which I already mentioned. It was set on add mode, and it is supposed to go always on normal mode. So now I can see the leaves. I'm going to turn back every sample um, to have a quality render right now. Back on global illumination, back on the rays, shadows, and also on the viewport. I'm making sure this has enough resolution. And here I'm testing the gamma to see if the diffuse texture for the leaves is appearing correctly on the viewport. So once you have everything back, like in the beginning, it's evident that the render will take a lot of time. This is one of the neat features I like about Moto that if you scratch your mouse over your image, render will come out faster. Also don't forget to check the settings for using secondary irradiance cache. I'm setting all the high settings for the viewport, that's why it's taking a long time. But you can already see that this tree looks pretty, pretty, pretty good. Alright, so I'm just pausing and re-recording what we got on the viewport on the final render. And now we, were, we are going to compare images from the first render with low settings and the second render with high settings. And you can clearly see shadows appearing much softer. Um, colors appearing much vividly in one than the other. And that's what I really like about this viewport, that you can also uh, make quick adjustments on the on the preview render and um, pardon, on the final render from the render window with the bloom effects and color correction tools. It's such a neat feature. Here I'm just exaggerating the color so you can see that the, the, this tool can go anywhere you would like to um, to modify your image. And here's the most important part. See your alphas that were simplified from speed tree? Well, you got them right there. Alpha and color. Thank you for watching.